everybody, and welcome to Sipping Saturday. Man, great to have y'all in here. I have a special guest today, Mr. John Wren in the house from Rescue Air. We're going to talk about HVAC and plumbing, but first of all, if you've been here before, welcome back. Uh, great to have you here. Man, it's Saturday morning. I know most of y'all been working all week. You really probably don't want to get up on Saturday morning and talk plumbing and HVAC, but it's a lot of fun. Those of you that have never been here before, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. If you have comments or questions, please, if it's a question, please put a Q in front of it. That way I'll make sure that I don't skip over it. And man, we're going to talk about HVAC, essential tips, pl plumbing and HVAC really, essential tips for trades professionals. Now, there's a lot of things that I learned about HVAC that I didn't know as a plumber until I started getting in studying HVAC. But John, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Man, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. How, how long have you been in HVAC? I've been doing it about 14 years now. 14 years. And you've moved up pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of guys that have been in HV, HVAC for 20 years and they're still in a truck. They're still sitting behind the desk, pushing paper, whatever it is they've got into. You've progressed very well. Yeah. But you've had some really good mentors. Yes, I have. That I makes have. a big difference, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. You know, one thing I love is, is is I tell people and make sure that my my camera is moving around. I'm gonna hit it just to make sure. Uh, one thing I tell people is make sure that you go to work for a company that that is gonna educate you, that's gonna yeah. train you, that's gonna help you grow. Yes, it's a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it is. And you, you're in management at Rescue Air. What do y'all do to help train the guys, help them grow, help them learn? Um, we have, uh, training on our processes as far as, you know, our agenda cards and different things Huge. like that, that, you know, really, um, help them progress when they're at a customer's house. We also have, uh, different technology that we use that, that help help the, help the guys go. So day software day. these days is amazing. Oh, it's out of control. What? What's Did you have out? anything no. like that when you started? No, no, no. We had a notepad. Nothing. Yeah, <laughs> had yeah. a notepad and a pencil. Yeah, it's so. a trip now. What's your favorite thing about the software? Talking about technology. Um, so I don't know if you if you've heard about uh, Rilla that mm -hmm. does uh, it's bas basically like a virtual ride along. Right. <laughs> it it helps coach the technicians it helps management listen and and understand what's going on at that call to help them get better at their job essentially you know we have so many trucks and so many crews and teams and everything you can't managers ride with can't everybody. ride with everybody yeah. all at once you know so it it's really a virtual ride along to help assist our technicians get better at what they do do you believe in ride alongs do they work oh yeah they yeah. do they they do um i think sometimes they kind of put a smoke screen on, on when, when you're there with them, you know, well, this is how I always do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, there, there is a little bit of smoke screen to that, but, um, right alongs do help. And, you know, I was always one of those people because like, I, I didn't get into, I, I got into service a long time ago, but then I got in the union and I don't know why my, my hair, there we go. Uh, I don't know why my. I got into service a long time ago, then I got in the union, but when I started my own company, I was always under the, it's like, look, man, if I ride along with John today, John's going to tuck his shirt in, <laughs> right? John's going to wear his booties in. Right. And so what I got to where I do, I just show up at jobs. Yeah. Just show up, park back behind the truck or something, come walking around, knock on the door real softly. <laughs> and wait for the owner to answer and say, Hey, my guys are in here. Can I, can I jump in and say hello and see how they're doing and whatnot? Yeah. And you know, you walk in, guys aren't wearing floor savers, shirts untucked, you know, their tool bags, not protected. There's no protection yeah. under it. And it's like, guys, come on, man. We know, but it's like, Oh man, I always do it. Right. You just, you caught me that one day. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. I, know, I, know, I know how this works and I know right. how it works. Right. Uh, I'm going to jump into the comments real quick. Say hello to Gunner Wheeler, GOAT. I guess he's talking about you. <laughs> Greatest of all time. There you go. Uh, Gunter, good to see you. Or Hunter, good to see you in here. Henry Wakefield says, good morning, crew, and happy Saturday. Good to see you in here, Squirt. Colton, happy Saturday to you, sir. Jerry Robinson says, Mr. Wakefield, first show, big fan. You're the best. 
Jeremy, you know what, man? I just, I love what I get to do. Uh, I promise you I'm not the best. There's a lot. I know a lot of amazing plumbers. Uh, a lot of them I look up to. Uh, some of them I learn from. But I don't, I know I'm not the best, but I try to do a good job and, and try to do that each and every day. Chris Reeves says, happy Saturday. It's a really nice day so far. Man, it, it's it's kind of nice here. It's a, uh, man, did you hear the thunderstorms overnight? Oh, yeah. Man. I heard the thunderstorms and almost set up in my bed because, like, dude, that was loud. It was close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, y'all don't get those in California, though, do you? Not not, not like out here. Man, it's funny. I remember going to the, the instructor training program when I was in the Union, and we're in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and the classroom that I was in, that had, like, the windows open or something. Mm -hmm. But, man, it just, I mean, it was it was a, a, a misty day, so, man, just the, the smell of ozone, it had rained overnight or something. And all of a sudden, a thunderstorm blew through. And it starts raining. And there's this big old, big old boy over in the corner. And man, when, when a bolt of lightning hit, he would jump. And it's like, dude, are you going to set my lap or what? <laughs> and he's like, dude, this is scary. And I'm looking like, well, what's wrong with you? He said, he said that, that's dangerous. And I'm like, okay, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. And he's like, man, we don't get that in California. No. I'm like, no. seriously? Yeah. We get it all the time here, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Yeah. I think that was uh, adjusting to the weather of Texas was the, the hardest transition for me. But. Yeah. I, and I believe that. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 the thunderbolts, the, the, the lightning storms. Yeah. Tornado warnings. Torna yeah. yeah tor I mean, <laughs> I think another crazy one. I remember driving down the road and, and got sorry we're jumping off on the weather, but we're in Texas. I'm driving down the road one day. It's a beautiful day. All of a sudden, it starts getting cloudy, and all of a sudden, like one inch size hail yeah. balls. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just driving down the road, and I'm like, there ain't nowhere to go, ain't nowhere to hide. You're stuck. Uh, yeah, yeah kind of crazy. Jeffrey Hallett says, hello from Minnesota. Jeff, how you doing, sir? Uh, Brian Stees says, companies are tracking their dudes, watching them, listening to them. We're headed into uncharted waters. And Byron, I got to tell you, I understand that point of view and don't disagree with you, but we're not tracking them to tell them, Hey, you're doing wrong. Right. We're tracking them say, Hey, let me help you get better. Mm -hmm. If, if but Byron, if, if you're one of these plumbers that when you walk in and, and look, I hate sales. I'll tell you that right now. I've always told people I'm not a salesman. Don't make me come in and sell. But then when I learned that I can walk in and say, oh, by the way, did you know you have a problem? You've got a water heater up here that, that's 14 years old. And I just, I want to make you aware of it because before I worried about adding a new, another laundry room, I'd probably replace those water heaters. They're right above your living room, a big double wide open ceiling and all that. Yeah. And, and the reason I tell that story, Byron, is that happened. And I didn't push her, didn't try to sell Nobody listens to me, listened to me at the time, but I'm not a good salesman because I don't want to sell. I just want to tell you about the problems you have and make sure that you're aware of all of them. And then say, look, this is one I would probably worry about that just like I did. And to me, you're not listening to get on to people. No, not at all. You know, we're listening. It's like I said, it's a virtual ride along to help coach that person to get better at their job. That's, that's where we're at now. If there is a time where there's some questionable stuff when there's yeah, things worth getting course, fired over yes of course it's going to be addressed and it's, they're going to be held accountable but the bottom line is to 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 help them get better at the job make more money make the company more more money and and go from there and, and, and here, here's here's my thought uh and and i see your next comment too there uh byron says i never minded surprise inspections i did mind being geotrack but let me ask you about this byron if I told you, hey, by, by carrying your phone in your pocket, when you go through your spill, when you when, when you first walk in and introduce yourself and say, look, here's my agenda card. I want to tell you what we're going to do today. This is what you can expect from me. And I noticed, hey, you're, you're skipping that over that whole part of where you're telling them, look, I'm going to give you five-star service. And at the end, I, I'm going to ask you, look, did I give you five-star service? And if I did, would, would you give me a review today? If I notice you're skipping over that, and you're not closing as much, you're not bringing as much value to your customer. And I told you, Byron, look, if you'll quit skipping this part here, you can probably make an extra 10% per year. 
For sure. You just gave yourself a raise. Yeah. And that's it. It's to help people feel more comfortable. Man, I met a guy in Anaheim. We were at one of the, the best practice groups. Mm-hmm. And, and he saw my, my price guide. Uh, and he looked at it. And he says, Roger, I love the way you designed it. This is beautiful. He said, he said, he said I'm, I'm going to steal your ideas. I'm going to do mine just like this, logo it up and all that. I said, that's cool. I don't care. He's in California. I'm in Dallas. Who yeah. cares? He says, I said, so what, what do you do? What can I steal from you? He said, Roger, I have my guys, when they walk in in the morning, I say, come give me your credibility statement. And we weren't even doing credibility statements. And he says, you know, my guys walk in and say, hey, I'm Roger Wakefield. Um, have you ever used us before? Have you ever used Texas Green Plumbing before? And if they're like, no, he says, but I already know whether they have or not. I've checked the report. So if they say no, I say, do you mind if I take a moment, tell you, tell you about me, tell you about Texas Green Plumbing, and tell you about why I work here? And his credibility statement was, look, I was a troublemaker growing up. I should probably be in prison right now or jail or something. It's where my family thought I'd be, but I got into plumbing. And, man, I love it. I love what I do. I get to help people each and every day. And, and, and that's part of why I work for Texas Green Plumbing because they have training. And their training makes sure that we get better at what we're doing, both as a plumber but also as just a person. What we learn helps us grow grow my family, grow my, my church, grow whatever it is. And the reason I still work here is we don't put up with shoddy service from anybody. Mm-hmm. If we've got bad plumbers, we want to help them or we want to help them out. Right. One or the other. And, man, I heard him say this, and I'm like, dude, I'm buying from you. Okay, I love your story. I love the way you introduce yourself. You've come in and let them know, look, but because the way he finished it, he said, so with me telling you all that, I just want you to know you're in good hands. Yeah. Don't you think I'm going to do the right thing for you today? And, man, it was like, dude, I love this story. Byron, my thought is if we could teach our people, all of our people, to do little things like that, it helps them build relationships. Yes. And it puts them in a better position. Absolutely. Do you consider it tracking people or that? I mean, it's, it's a ride along. It's a virtual ride along. Yeah. But if you really ride along with somebody, they're going to get, they're going to tuck their shirt in. It's a smoke screen. It, it is. Yeah. That they're going to, they're, they're going to do everything they're supposed to do. Yeah. I love that. Uh, tool fetch. What is up? Question. What are the average wages for an HVAC tech? And what do the upper five to ten percent make? Ooh, good question. We, we shot a video about yeah, that. Yeah, we ago. just shot a video. Yeah, about that's that. an easy one. I already know the answer to that. But go ahead, brother. <laughs> so HVAC techs um, at Rescue Air were were commission. The technicians are commission based. So now let's don't don't just do Rescue Air. Yeah, you've worked at Rescue. I've worked Air. at other you, companies you've as at well. Too, so across the country. Yeah, majority of companies are are commission based. Um, some are hourly. Um, California, for example, has to run hourly because they they're Laws, their pay, laws are laws. different. Yeah, different. their labor laws is what yeah. it is. Okay. <laughs> but but but, and you say this, most big companies, most best practice group companies are commission. Correct, because they want to give their employees the opportunity to make yes the money that that they need to make. Right, but there are a lot of hourly companies still out there. There is. There are a lot there. smaller yeah. normally. They're, yeah, they're smaller okay. and and maybe not getting as many opportunities or calls to run. So okay, so. If you were to maximize all your opportunities on every call, um, follow the process, follow the agenda card, and do all that stuff. The higher, the upper 10, 10 to fifteen percent. I mean, you could get up for, from one hundred and fifty to two hundred grand a year as as a service technician. Now, a sales technician, we talked about this, where those guys, I mean, they're anywhere from three hundred to five hundred thousand a year as a, as a sales technician. Now, and, and they, I and I know service techs that, that are doing two fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now the, the the upper ten to fifteen percent, they didn't get there on year one. They no. got 15, 20 years invested underneath their belt to get to that point. So if you're willing to come in and follow a process and and really adapt to what that company has to offer, utilize their training, utilize their technology and all that stuff, you can get there a lot faster than those guys because the technology is here. Yeah. It, and it is. And, and I just I want to jump back to, to Byron because this jumped into my mind when you said that. If the company, Byron, is spending a lot of money to train you to teach the right things for you to do, this is just a way they're just checking to see, are you, are you using them? Are you learning them? Mm-hmm. Is it helping you? 
is, is it worth investing more in you because you are learning and growing and, and look, and I see both sides. I'm not yeah. saying, look, I think every person in the world should be tracked and monitored every word they say all day, every day. No, but as a virtual ride along where you're like, Hey, look, let's, because you still got to sit down and listen to all that. Yeah, for sure. It's just like you're riding with them. Yeah. And, but also I think if the guys knows, Hey, John may be listening to what I'm doing today. I want to make sure I do it right each and every day. Mm -hmm. And the, the HVAC techs and plumbers that, that use the agenda card, use the credibility statement, use everything they do. They normally make more money for sure. Yeah. They, they've been trained and they take that guys. This isn't just training that me and John sat down and said, Hey, no, let's make no. guys do this no. just right. to see if they'll really do it. Yeah. This is from Proven best practices. practice groups yeah. that have done this and tried this. Everything's tried and tested. It, and, and, and Byron and man, I'm not picking on you. I love the statement. I really do. My thought is if you knew, Hey, I could do this and improve my business, improve my reputation, improve my relationship with my customers and improve my five-star ratings that I bring into the company. Would you want to do it? And, and man, I, I see you made another comment. I, I can't see it, but I'll get down to it. But man, I, I would just, I would love to, 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 to know your thoughts on that. And, and actually everybody. If I told you, hey, I could put you through a training each and every year that's going to cost me 10 grand, but it's going to help you make 10% more each and every year, not just for you, but for the company, but it's going to help you increase that 100,000 to 110, okay? That 110 to 121 each year. Yeah. Would you do it? I mean, I'm in. I'm in. You're, you're going to invest in me where I can make more money. Yeah. What, what, where do I sign up? Yeah. And you want to listen to me so you can coach me and say, Hey, Roger, look, I mean, you're, you're, you skipped over your credibility statement, man, I was yeah. in a hurry. Yeah. But you notice you didn't close that sale. Yeah. And, and, and that's something that, I mean, I put myself in the technician shoes. If I was, if I'm having a good conversation with the customer rapport is good. Everything's going great. Options are presented and they they didn't go with any of those options don't you wonder why yeah now you could go back and you could listen to that and understand that's where i went wrong because attitude will shift yeah the conversation will change all of a sudden it's like wait what just happened right well roger you you mentioned this doesn't help everybody because there was that one job one yeah. time and that's what they heard mm -hmm. so yeah it meant it's good stuff uh Tyson L says, Hey Roger, how are you doing? Good to see you in here. And let me see. Yeah, we're, we're at 50. Everybody do me a favor and, and put in the comments, just, just so John knows where you're from, where you're at, where you're living and, and what you do. Are you an HVAC tech? Are you a plumber? Uh, are you an electrician? What, 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 what do you do? What, what trade are you in? Or even are you in the trades? You know, I asked this question when I guy says, I'm a gynecologist. Like, oh man, I'm helping you with the plumbing. So we're good. <laughs> uh, you know, you, 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 you have those conversations every now and then. Adrian L says, happy Saturday, warm and brisk here in Southern California. Rain's coming for the next three days. Plum on. You're familiar with Southern California. I aren't am. You? I a little, am. A little, a little, a little comfy there, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. So where'd you grow up in Southern California? I grew up in Montclair, California. It's outside of San Bernardino Riverside area. Yeah. Like those are the surrounding areas. And yeah, that's where I was born and raised and fled there for political asylum back in 2020. Man. Uh, <laughs> 2022. Yeah. A, a lot of people, a lot <laughs> of people are fleeing California. Yeah. And I'm not saying anything bad about it because I don't live there, but I, I mean, I know people that have moved from there to Utah. Uh, actually now from Utah to Costa Rica too, but yeah, I know, I know a lot of people disappearing Yeah, from California. <clears throat> uh, Zendine Babush. And I hope I got that right. Brother says, Hey Roger, is TD industries a good company to work for? I, I tell you what Zendine, it, it used to be, I've worked for TD. Uh, I love TD because they, they used to have that servant leadership attitude. And man, they wanted to help you grow. They would invest in you and train in you. I like the way that they brought apprentices in back then. They would literally bring an apprentice in. And after a couple of months, as long as they were on time every day, showed up, didn't call in sick, they were on time, they didn't leave early, 
they bring them in and say, hey, we're going to teach you to be a soldering specialist. So they bring you into the office for a week. For, for eight hours a day, every day, they would teach you how to clean, put together copper, and solder it. All day, every day, until you got it right. Just to make sure you knew how to do it. Then they'd give you your five denim shirts with your name on it. Now you're a soldering specialist. You got like a $2 raise. So you started at eight bucks. Now you make 10. So you got a 25% raise after two or three months. Man, living on, living high on the hog. But that's what they did. They brought you in and taught you a specialty. So, man, I used to love a lot of things that they did. I thought that was great. But then the problem was they'd end up keeping you right there. You're a solder wow. specialist. You ain't learning how to put in that sewer. You're not, you're not learning how to set those fixtures. You're really good at soldering. Keep doing what you do. Yeah. And, you know, you don't ever want to get in a position where you can get stuck. You want to go to work for a company that you're going to be able to learn a little bit of everything. Don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, I tell people specialize in something and be freaking amazing at it. Whole house water filtration, slab leak detection, indoor air quality. There, there's a bunch of stuff that, that you can do. Uh, Dante Lim says, sir, thank you for sharing your professional knowledge. Did he call me a professional? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I did I did fix my, my water tank by following your video a couple of times. Good for you. I love that. Uh, and, and, look, I love that I get to make videos to teach people how to fix their stuff. It really is pretty cool. Grizzly Man 15 says, Roger, any tips thinking about getting into plumbing? Yeah, man, we, we just literally shot a video about getting in, into plumbing or HVAC, either one. And, you know, First of all, you, you started off great. You already know what trade you want to get in. So now when people tell me, hey, I'm thinking about getting into plumbing, I say, are you wanting to get into commercial, residential, service, new construction, union or non-union? Mm -hmm. And they're all like, uh, I, I don't know. I just want to get into plumbing. <laughs> yeah. But you need to think about that. Do you like fixing things or do you like building things? Because building things is new construction. Fixing things is repair. And, you know, you talked a while ago, you like being on one job all day long, make it perfect, then move on to the next one. It's a great thing about service or installation. You can be on one job or you can be at three or four and you get in, you, you fix all these little problems. It's something different every day. Sometimes it's something different every few hours. Mm -hmm. New construction, you're liable to be on the same project for five years. Right. And I've been on some big jobs that different phases have almost lasted that long. So, man, ask yourself those questions. Those would be my first tips. And then the glizzy man, you're doing good. You're in a YouTube place where you're already learning about plumbing. Right. So you know things about it going in that, that some people, man, y'all can watch YouTube for a week and know more than we ever knew when we got into the yeah. trades. Yeah. It, it's, it's crazy. Uh, DM Android says, did you know roly poly bugs? Love to eat fog. I did not. Uh, I cut some section on a drain pipe coming from a kitchen sink. You know, I did not saw that. And those y'all don't know, FOG, fats, oil, and grease. Uh, big problem for septic systems. So roly poly bugs around there might be a good deal. Have you ever plumbed for a cryogenic and or worked around it? I've been around it. I've never done any plumbing in cryogenic. Uh, liquid nitrogen. It, I've, I've worked with that at Texas Instruments. But... I, I didn't do that. Hey, Gizzy, I'm going to tell you, uh, you might want to stop with the caps because the bot, which I hadn't seen in a while, Colton, we may need to turn the night bot back on. Uh, all you got to do is put, put a cue in front of it. I, I'm, I'm going to get to it. Uh, how long did it take you to learn everything you needed to know about plumbing? You still don't. I was fixing to say, <laughs> do, do you know everything there is about HVAC? No, sir. Uh, I and, mean, and you, you never know all you need to know. Uh, one thing that I tell people when I help them get in the trades, never stop learning. Do you still do training yourself? Do you go in for trainings? You still learn something new every, every yeah. year, don't you? Mm -hmm. Man, it's how we grow, guys. I remember hearing Tony Robbins say it one day. He says, look, the thing that we live for most that we love is progress. Are we getting better? Are we progressing? Are we right. improving? And, man, when we quit doing that, I think it's when we slow down, we start coasting, and really, we start going down because everybody else is progressing yeah. around us. Uh, Byron Steve says, I'm a pessimist uh, to be sure regarding the man's intentions, 
but you make great points for sure. Brian, look, and, and man, I'm not telling you I'm right or wrong. And, and I'm, I'm not going to tell you John's right or wrong. I see the benefits of it. I'm kind of like you. I'd be like, wait, you're going to track me and listen to everything I say in the house? But you know what I'm going to be thinking? I need to work on my game. Mm -hmm. I need to get better. And especially if they're spending a lot of money. I mean, think about it. If you've worked there five years, they've invested 50 grand in you just on training to make you better. So th that, that's why I see that. But, man, I, I appreciate that. I really do. Architectural sheet metal in the house. How we doing today? Man, I was out there. It's funny. I, I walked John out and showed him my barn earlier and said, look, I, I want to take this roof off and, and raise it four feet and do all this and that. Uh, man, I'm getting ready. I'm, 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 I'm getting the itch. It's time. Uh, Phil says, howdy, uh, from Port Neches, Texas, South Texas. Gotta love it. Been plumbing for 48 years and am amazed at how plumbing has changed from when I started. Okay. So I'm like you, you, you've been plumbing 48 years. I've been plumbing 44 years. How much has plumbing and HVAC changed just since you got in 14 years ago? Oh, HVAC alone. I mean, just the technology. I mean, the refrigerant. And it's about to change again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, it, and these are major changes. It's not just, yeah. hey, we're going to add a few. Yeah, it's it's a whole nother uh -huh. learning curve, you know, um, and just the technology with inverter boards and different stuff like that. So it's a constant change in technology and just got to adapt to it and grow with it. I, I, I've got a, in my attic about a month ago when it was really cold. The upstairs heat wouldn't come on. Mm -hmm. uh, took off my panel, took off my panels, washed it, and it'd kick on for just a second, and it'd kick back out and kick on and kick back out. So called a friend of mine, HVAC tech, you know, knowledgeable guy. And he's like, man, the, they've got a plug there that there's a problem with it. He said, you know, grab that plug and kind of push it in, put your thumb on. Sure enough, man, it'd kick right up. Yeah. As soon as you let go, it'd shut back off. I said, well, hey, I need another wiring harness. He said, yeah, that, you can't get it. I said, what do you mean I can't get it? He says, well, they don't just sell the wiring harness. At least that's what mm -hmm. he said. And I'm like, dude, what do I do? He says, uh, I don't know. He said, but they tell you to replace the unit. And I'm like, because of a bad plug? So I'm literally, I think outside the box, I go get an ice pick and literally reach inside there and push each one of those pins because that plug is just holding these pins where they need to go. Mm -hmm. So I take, and really it wasn't the ice pick, it was on the awl, so it had a sharp point. So I could literally put it right on the end of the brass and just push it and make sure it's plugged all the way in, fired it back up, turned on. He said it'll probably last you forever. Yeah. Man, it changes a lot. Those PC boards, that that's the brain. Yeah, so a lot of, lot of changes there. It's a constant change. It's And it's to make it better, it's to yeah. make it more efficient. And that's what goes back to you're never going to know everything. And you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're not. Yeah, keep on learning. Yeah. Uh, oh, let me see here. Old German sign. There we go. I thought, man, I know that means something. I uh, just want to say I did my IBEW apprenticeship interview on Monday, and I use your advice, and I'll find out in April if I get the spot. I, I'll tell you what, and, and I'm curious when you say you took my advice, did you do the whole – Walk in, shake their hand, thank you for this opportunity, sit down, ask questions, thank them again before you leave. Did you go through the whole process? See, I should have been monitoring you. Uh, did you go through the whole process, or did you just come in and, and answer questions and ask questions? I'd be really interested to learn what all you did. Uh, but, man, good luck. Look, the IBEW, is, is, it's a good union. Uh, that, that's for the, those of y'all that don't know, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, I would love to get. The president of the IBEW in here, the president of the United Association, the president of the Sheet Metal Workers Union, and just get in and do like we did this morning. Yeah. Shoot a podcast about how they got in the trades, how they got in the union. It'd be, it'd be a little bit different. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there that, that would love to get in the union. They just don't know how. And, you know, my thing is, if you want to get into the union and I had the president of the union in here telling you, this is how you get in. This is what you do. This is how you grow. I think it'd be great for people, but I'm doing just as good. I got John here. He's telling you how to get in the open shop to a great company and, and move up and make, I hate to say this more money than the union's ever going to pay you <laughs> uh, because you can, you can move up. The union doesn't do commission, at least down here. Uh, if any of y'all are in the union, 
either HVAC, plumbing, anything like that, and they have a commission position, I, I'd be interested in hearing about it. I hadn't hadn't seen it. Byron says that the 25 year old tech in me resists the 40 year old contractor owner says this is the way man I, I get it right and look i'm not trying to convert you over i'm just man it does it makes sense and you know josh called and told me about that product and i'm like wow you know what that that's that's really pretty yeah. interesting there you go yeah it, guys if you like what you're hearing here i mean i mean we, we, we got 50 47 over here i don't even know how many oh, 51 over here uh you, you know guys if you like what you're hearing give us a thumbs up uh, if you like what you're hearing and you think you know somebody that needs to hear it, man, do, do something. Grab your phone out, take a selfie uh, with, with the screen there, share it, tag me in it, share it on your social media. My team will, will share it out with our community and tag you in it. So, man, if you like what you see, just let people know. Glizzy Man says, Connecticut, I'm interested in plumbing. God, do they have plumbing up in Connecticut? I mean, way up in the northeast. <laughs> I, no, I, I love that. Uh, look, get, getting into plumbing is is a great career. Plumbing, HVAC, electrical, roofing, it, it, it doesn't matter. There's so many good careers out there. And, guys, we need people. We, we, we talked earlier. You said you could hire, what, about 20 people right now, yeah. plumbers, HVAC techs, and installers, install crews, that if, if they were that, if they were good people, you could, you could put that many more people could to use work. them. Yeah. It, guys, it, it's crazy out there. Uh, okay. Tyson is Dallas tech, a, Dallas, Texas, HVAC tech. Uh, don't know that you work for rescue air or not. That's what, that's where John's at. Uh, you know, Tyson, look, and you don't have to say what company you're at. Does your company do training? Do you get trained multiple times a year or anything like that? And, and I'm just curious. Uh, Old German Stein is in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and is a chef. That's pretty cool. You know, I love to cook. You, you like to cook? Barbecue and stuff. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. My, I got my green egg and my Traeger. And my, yeah. my, my, I'm a smoker and a, and a, and a griller. I love it. Uh, LJ Swish One says, Pop Fitter Apprentice, local 189 out of Columbus, Ohio. And good to see you in here. Uh, Squirt is a pop fitter. Uh, he was a pop fitter. Came up in local 100 here in the Dallas area. Uh, are you familiar with pop fitters and, and welders and all that fun stuff and what all they did? Not really. Not, no, not really. You, well, you've, you've been in the residential, not, I guess all residential. Yeah. So pop fitters is, is, a, is like a plumber that runs the big carbon steel pipe and welding it and all that. And man, he, he loved it. I tried to get him into plumbing. He said, yeah, too many of y'all. So he he became a pipe fitter, So he, and he loved it. So good for you. Architectural sheet metal. Alex is standing same roof metal roofer and business owner in Ontario, Canada. I was with some plumbers. Got plumbers from Ontario and Quebec uh, last week at WET. Uh, I went to AHR and WET last week. The air conditioning, heating, refrigeration show in Chicago was really cool. I've never been to Chicago, so I thoroughly enjoyed that. I've been to AHR before, an amazing conference, and then got to go over to WET, too, and hang out with a lot of plumbing and HVAC influencers. So, man, it was really, really neat. Uh, Byron is in Northern California, plumbing contractor, four years, sole proprietor. Byron, man, I, I love that because you'll start out right now, right now as a sole proprietor. If it's just you, you'll make great money. Uh if, you, if you've got two or three trucks, it's gonna, you're going to struggle for a little while. But man, once you can get over like five or six trucks, you, you should be looking really good. How, how big are you, Brian? How many trucks are you running? Uh, Texas Best Barndominium. Love your stuff, sir. Happy Saturday. Man, do you build Barndos? Uh, I actually, man, I, I've looked at wanting to build one of those out here. Wouldn't that look good like back in the back corner of the 10 acres cool. back there? Yeah. Fisherman 805 Lopez says, Santa Monica, California, learning the plumbing trades. So you get people that come in and, and work in a shop, starting out, running parts, whatever needs to be done. What do you tell them at that point? What can they start learning then to help them get better? Other than just learn the parts, know what the parts are, and learn more about it. 
sometimes, you know, when, when they arrive to the job with those parts, there may not be another other places to go to pick up parts. Stay at that job and, and observe what, what those plumbers are doing, what those H installers are doing and understand what they're, what, what goes together to, that's the next step is okay. Here's all your parts. Now, how do they go together? <laughs> so like spend that. some time out at the job. You know, when, when you hire a parts runner, does he get his plumbing apprentice card? And is there an HVAC apprentice card? Do you have to register when you start out in HVAC like you do plumbing? You don't have to register with the HVAC like you do with plumbing. But, yes, they do get their plumbing apprentice card. Like, if they're coming in as an apprentice, then we'd register to get them right oh, in. Smart idea. Yeah. Really smart. Because then their hours start counting. You, you bet. Yeah. And, and believe it or not, even if you're driving a truck delivering parts, you're learning about plumbing, especially if you do like John said. You're out there in the field helping them. Hey, you know what? You need somebody to help you lift that water heater up and get in there. I, yeah. I can help you do that. Yeah. So neat deal. Uh, drain medic. Welcome back. Good to see you in here. New Hampshire plumber drain cleaning. Fun, fun. I, mean, I, I love that area. The, the Northeast Connecticut, New Hampshire, all that. Y'all are living in beautiful country. I don't think it gets to be 113 degrees. No, there. probably not. Last summer, not this one we just had, but the summer before was John's first summer in Texas, and it was a record heat yeah, summer. It was brutal. He, he got here in April, and it's already like 100 degrees, and it's like, man, <laughs> what's the deal here? It's like 70 in California. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I know. Uh, Revive Rise Consulting says restoration industry checking in. Good to see you in here. You know, we get a lot of water mitigation and restoration and stuff like that here in Texas. Man, that would be a great time to, to change duct work out. You know, if, yeah. if you've got, you know, I, I talked about that lady while ago, her water heater ruptured in the attic and her ceiling falls in. And in the interview we did over on the trade talks and Randy, if you're in here, uh, squirt, will you put the link to the trade talks up in the impended in there or Colton, either one. Uh, you know, I interviewed John while ago, and we were talking about some different things, but a lot of it is different areas you can get in and make more money. But water restoration is something that we, we deal with a lot here in Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good business, uh, great opportunities in it. Toolfetch says, New York skilled trades advocate, advocating for all trades and CEO of Toolfetch Equipment Supplier. Guys, yeah, go, go check out his YouTube channel. Just check it out. See what you think. Five Rise Consulting says moisture mapping, which is huge. Is YouTube the only channel monitored? I'm, I'm assuming you mean monetized. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. Right now, we are on YouTube and four different Facebook pages or groups. Uh, we can also go live stream on LinkedIn, we do that on Wednesday. So, uh, but YouTube's where we make our money. Rolandus Wedding, I hope I got that right. Uh, can you recommend anyone in Ontario? Man, I wish that I could. Uh, I need to put together a referral service. I really do. I need to put together a network of, of great tradesmen. Because, look, I do know some really, really good ones. Uh, and I'm going to jump down here real quick because I got a super chat. I want to make sure I get to it. What plumbing opportunities are available to me if I have a CDL license? You know, if you went to work for, for a large, you know, somebody asked about TD while ago. I remember <clears throat> I was working on the Schlumber J project down in Austin, Texas, out by Lake Travis. And I remember... One of the CDL drivers pulls up. He had brought in a skid. I don't know if it was HVAC units, air handlers, uh, plumbing headers, whatever it was. And he brought it in, and the superintendent went out and talked to him, and I went out to help unload it. Uh, and literally, he was talking to him because he's getting ready to retire. And he said, so so you're going to be okay? You, you're going to be comfortable? And he kind of laughed. He said, man, well, with my 401K and my employee earnings, because TD used to be, may still be, uh, an employee owned company, meaning employees had stock shares. Uh, he literally, he said, look, with, with everything that I've got going, he says, uh, I'm a, yeah, he says, I've, I've got over a million dollars in the bank right now. 
guys, man, learn to put money up at an early mm -hmm. age. It's a big deal. Uh, let me see. Where was I? Okay, proprietor, love your stuff, sir. Happy Saturday. Thank you very much. And Ken Rose, thank you. I, I appreciate the super chat. Uh, I would find a big company. Uh, if you're in an area like Dallas, there, there's brand engineering, and they're associated with countries all around the country. Beard Mechanical, I had Burt Wells in a few weeks ago. They drive materials. They fab for a lot of companies. So they move materials across country all the time. Fisherman 805 Lopez, learning the plumbing trade. There we go. Okay, I think I hit these a while ago. Uh, there we go. Once you're mapping, I know. There we go. Ontario, that was it. So Adrian L says, hello, gentlemen, Union Local 78, journeyman and C36 licensed plumbing contractor. On a union call right now, rough end on government 48 unit affordable housing complex with 2020 plumbing and heating. Y'all got a lot going on down there. And I said, no, that's in Canada because C36. Union 78 journeyman and C36 licensed plumbing contractor. You got a lot going on. But, you know, the cool thing, have you ever done, well, I guess you have done affordable housing. Yeah. That was one of your first jobs, wasn't it? Yeah, low-income programs. A lot, lot of work to it, too. Yeah, yeah. Roger and Replum are the best plumbing uh, watches on YouTube. Byron, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Michael Hirsch says, John Wren is the man. What does he know? <laughs> uh, see, I'll tell you what. This, this is rigged. <laughs> no, John, Michael, you're right. Number one, welcome in here. Uh, John's fantastic. Uh, you know, it's really neat. I remember one of the first times that I, I mean, we had been in manager meetings and talked to you there, got to know you when you were coming in, and we were going over to a, a summer party at a house. Yeah. And you're outside on the phone when I pulled up. So I stood there and let you finish. And I said, look, you know, what, what do we got to do to become a better company? And you're like, man, we're, we're so close. Yeah. There's so many pieces yeah. in place that, that are really, really good. Yeah. And man, it's just, it, it was a neat conversation. Uh, I love your attitude. Love the way you see things. And man, you, you just, you, you were a great ad rescuer. That's for Thank sure. You. Thank you. So yeah, Michael, I agree. He, he's a pretty good guy. Adrian says, looking forward to seeing you at the Flow Expo next month here in California. Yes, I am headed to Pomona, out kind of your neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, going to be out there. Where, where did we say I was going to be? Pomona Fairplex. Fairplex, that's right. Had to think about that. Uh, yeah, I'm coming in uh, on the 8th. I've got to have a VIP dinner with some people. Uh, get up on the 9th. I'll be over at the show. And then on, that would be a Saturday on the 9th. Uh, I think I'm speaking at 115. I get to be the keynote speaker this year, so it'll be really, really cool. Going to be pretty neat. And then I got to do a, another VIP dinner that night with, with some other people. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, I think PHCC is doing some great things and helping a lot of people out. So, Adrian, thank you very much. Adrian, I appreciate that. Uh, make sure you come say hello. Uh, man, because you're good. I'm, the caps didn't bother me. I just didn't want Nightbot to to boot you out. And a lot of times, if it sees the caps, it'll hide your comments, and then it'll basically block you for like 30 minutes or something. Teacherino, the Bambino says, uh, can your cousin still throw a good knuckleball? Uh, not my cousin, man. Restoration industry checking in. We love our plumbers. You know, it, John, the, the neat thing about that is, Normally, plumbing causes the problem, plumbing or HVAC. Uh, but, yeah, uh, working with a good restoration company is a great thing. And, and yeah, we, we all do it together. What is the most unique niche tool for plumbing and HVAC? I'll, I'll let you take the, the, the HVAC part. The most niche tool, because I know what I think it is. For, for HVAC, mm -hmm. I'd say digital gauges. Digital okay. gauges is one. Um, Battery operated uh, vacuum pump. That's cool. Milwaukee's got a new one. Milwaukee's freaking got a new one. Man, that's, Milwaukee. Yeah. I tell you what. Yeah, that's. The, I think Milwaukee's the only one that has a battery operated one. But I it's saw pretty it. cool. There's, I got to go to the pipeline yeah. last year. I walked in and I'm just like, yeah. They brought it into our shop the other day when they did like a, a 
a tool display and stuff. And who, I was who like, came in? I don't remember his okay. name. Okay. But they did a tool display and everything, and I was like, man, that thing's cool. <laughs> yeah. Nick Pond has, has showed me some really cool stuff yeah. over there. Uh, yeah. I, th I think the most niche tool for me in HVAC is the indoor air quality monitor. That's cool. You yeah. get a good technician. That, and, and, look, I know it's been around. Yeah. But you get a technician that uses it every house they walk in. Guys, indoor air quality, it, it's a big deal. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. For plumbing, I, I think leak detection equipment is the most niche because you've got you've to be good at something special. You know, we talked about that earlier. I don't like – certain training that brings you in and only teaches you one thing. But I believe if you're going to be a great plumber, business owner, anything like that, you better specialize in things that most people don't, whether it's tankless water heaters, slab leak detection, whole house water filtration, indoor air quality, UV sterilization, whatever it is, man, specialize in something, get really, really good at it. And then, Byron Steve says, says that in plumbing, it's got to be the pipe stretcher. You've got a few of those, don't you? <laughs> Old German Steen says, yes, I did. Good deal. Even brought in a portfolio. Uh, good man. Good luck. Explain how my skills as a chef can cross over. The, there you go. And it, I love that. You, you know, it, it's about taking care of people uh, at the end of the day. If you've got a job. I don't care if you're a commercial plumber or HVAC tech, you've got a general contractor you're working for. You've got to take care of them just like it's a homeowner. Mm -hmm. And you've got to communicate with them. You, you've got to do everything right. So I, I do. I like that. Uh, I was in place. Anything but my real name. There you go. How's that for a name? Just love this guy. I guess he's talking about you because most people don't love me. <laughs> Colton says Roger's hosting the cent. Oh, see, see, it's up on the and it's on the board right now. Yeah, uh, hosting the Central Therm Family Feud in Miami. Want to hear from real tradesmen? There's a link right there. And Colton, if you want to tag that or pin it up top, I might be able to. Uh, that may keep it up there. I don't know if it will or not. But yeah, I, Roger in the white tailcoat. You better look out. Uh, Tyson said, no, I work for Dallas Plumbing Company and AC, and yes, they do Nexstar training. Good for you. And, and you know, ne Nexstar is one of the best practice groups that does a lot of good. Uh, I know Rescue Air is part of Nexstar. Yes. Uh, they do a lot of good. I remember the first Nexstar training I went to was BPW, the business planning mm -hmm. workshop, and walked in, man, I was just like, wow. You know, I just went from this type of company to this type, and, and it was a big, big it's a big difference. Uh, the, the, the quality of the training compared to what I've been to, the depth that they went into, it, it, it was freaking pretty cool. John says, industry consultant for the property damage restoration industry in Cleveland, Ohio. Good deal. I'm a man in a van scared poopless to hire. But Byron, I, and I understand that. Uh, essential tips for trade professionals when it comes time to hire. If you're a chuck in a truck, a one-man plumbing company, one-man HVAC, HVAC company, what do you look for when you're hiring somebody? Who's that first person you think you hire? Just great attitude, motivated, um, willing to learn and coachable. I mean, you could train just about anybody that's willing to – that's that's motivated and, and coachable. Mm-hmm. You know, one, one thing that, that I look at, too, is I want somebody that can do the things I'm doing. You know, I go back to Michael Gerber a lot. Yeah. You can't be the technician, the manager, and the entrepreneur. Right. If, if you are, you're only doing your job 33% right all mm -hmm. day long. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter which one, you're only doing it a third of the time. Right. And I remember the day that I hired somebody to do what I was doing so I could work on the business, that's when I started growing. And it's like, okay, this makes such a big difference. And it does. Uh, Texas Barnuminium says, have a great day, guys. Appreciate your educational style and channel. Been following a couple of years now. Man, I love that. Thank you very much. Okay, now I'm going to hit this refresh button just to see because 
I know. Computer's moving on slow. There we go. See, we went to 28 thumbs up. Okay. Christian Hernandez has a question. What is your opinion on plumbing training for three months to become a drain technician? I don't think that's enough time. What do you think? You know, Christian, I mean, it, it depends. And, and I want you to think about this. If I took you for three months, you're in California, Ritter Hero. Mm -hmm. John Acoyan brings people in, and, and don't get me wrong, he doesn't just put them in training or on a truck or anything like that. He, he gives them a job. They're, they're on a shovel. They're, they're, they're cleaning something. They, they, they've got a laborious type job. And they've got this job for two or three months, three or four months. They show up every time. It's like what TD did. They show up on time. They do what they're supposed to do. That they, they go above and beyond. John brings them in and says, hey, look, I'm going to put you in the tra plumbing training program. He's got trainers in his shop. Three days a week, you're in here training on equipment. The other two days a week, you're riding with technician John, who's been through the training program and knows it is good or better than anybody. And he says, in eight to ten weeks, I can train somebody and put them out in the field as a plumber. They know how to clean drains. They know how to change out a toilet, rebuild a toilet, change out a faucet, rebuild a faucet. Mm -hmm. Test for sewer leaks, test for water leaks, test for this, test for that. I truthfully think that in eight to ten weeks, which is only two months, I could train somebody to be a good technician. Are they going to know everything? No. I, I've been at 44 years. I don't know everything. I, I'm, I'm wanting to learn CIPP, cure in place plastic popping. But I've, I've never done it. There's always something new to learn. But I truthfully think that if as advanced as CIPP is, I think if I went with somebody and trained for three months, I could come do that. So my thought is, why couldn't you teach someone to be a good drain technician in three months? I, I think it could be done. Uh, does it mean they know everything? No. But do you know everything? No. We, we, we've, we've always got a lot to learn. Yeah. Uh, what got you into plumbing to begin with? Well, well first, let's start with you. What, what, what got you into HVAC? <laughs> Your wife. Yeah, um, I kind of kind of landed in this industry off off a of fluke. You know, I got out of the got out of the army in two thousand nine. Economy was junk. Yeah, shot. and uh, you know, looking for a job and got in. Started parks running and kind of <clears throat> moved up from there. You know, guys started calling in sick. They offered me the opportunity to go out in the field, start learning, and took off from there. Do you ever look back and wish, man, I wish it would have been plumbing or wish it would have been electrical or anything like that? No, I don't. I don't. Well, and, and the good thing about HVAC, HVAC contains a lot of plumbing, contains a lot of H electrical. Yeah. I remember when I went, I went to uh, Lindsay Cooper to get my HVAC certification and literally the first day in, they said, look, you know, we, we break it down. We, we talk about safety. We talk about electrical. We talk about refrigerants. The first half of, of the, the deal, and I don't, I don't know why it's not rotating. I keep hitting it. Uh, I literally, you, you do that the first half of your class. And then the last half, they've got the shop, and you go back there and you you install a soft start, you check capacitors, you check relays, you, you do everything. Cool thing about it, is man, there's a lot to learn. There is, yeah. There's a lot to learn, and and the training environment is totally different than than real world. So, it, it, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> Co completely. Yeah. And then they've got the simulators you can get on. Yeah, where it's like you walk up to a house. What's well, step one? But one of the first days in, literally, and Professor Tony or, or, or Instructor Tony says, electrical problems are ninety percent of the the problems you have with HVAC. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, I never wanted to be an electrician. Yeah. And but but that's kind of what it what what it turned into. It, it was uh, a complete mess. Uh well, let me do that. Let me see this for just a second. Uh, 
So Revi says for, for chat, I felt like I was talking to myself or chat. Oh, did it go? Okay, cool. Thank you, Colton. Uh, there is the, the link to the trade talks. Like I said, interviewed John earlier, and it's a good thing. Uh, if y'all want to just click on that, open up another tab, go over there and hit subscribe. That way you'll know about it and, and listen to it later. It, it's, it's kind of fun just sitting there just talking shop. It was cool. It, it, it was it's, cool. It's not anything like what you thought. No. Uh, no. You know, people come in and they're like, they're like, man, they're sweating. They're like, oh, my God, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous. Or, yeah. or, or my pit's wet and all this. Yeah. And it's like, dude, just we're just going to sit and talk. Yeah. And, you know, I explained how the conversation – look. I'll start about how you got in the trades, how you ended up here, and yada, yada, yada. And, man, once you get in and just start talking, that's that's all it is. Yeah. It is a conversation. Uh, the Gizzy Man says, mine's a funny story. Accidentally clogged my grandma's toilet and unclogged it with a flexi drain. Kind of enjoyed it. Man, there's a reason to get into plumbing right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, my thing is that I was literally working at a hamburger place. He said, you know, never wanted to flip burgers. It's like, well, I did that. Did that in high school, and it was uh, late one night. Tuesday night, we were dead and working with one of my best friends. And, and he literally says, uh, got to talking. He looked at me and said, so, so are you going to do this forever? I was like, man, I'm 16 years old. I'm, I'm managing a restaurant. Life is mm -hmm. good. I wasn't making money, but, you know. And he says, uh, he says so what happens if you get fired? Who's going to hire a 16-year-old restaurant manager? And I had never thought about that. I thought, God, I don't know. I wouldn't. So started looking at different things, but I ended up quitting school in the middle of my junior year, called one of his brothers because he told me that night about all three of them were plumbers and his dad was a plumber and they loved it and made good money. So I just started looking into it, went to work with one of them, loved it, ended up going back to school, graduated with my class and a couple of months after graduation, got back into plumbing and I love it. So yeah, we, we've all got funny stories or, I don't think any of us, I mean, I don't remember seeing any kids on career day that came in dressed as a plumber and says, when I grow up, I want to be a plumber. We just kind of end up doing what we do. Uh, we have that for great restoration contractors. It's great. Absolutely. Best practice groups can, can help you learn and do a lot. Uh, I'm surprised for the trade talks. I would love to be a restoration industry expert. Uh, if you need it, plumbing and HVAC go hand in hand. Absolutely. Adrian says, California and Los Angeles. You're very familiar with the L.A. area, aren't you? Mm -hmm. uh, my apologies, it's Local 78 and C36 license are here in beautiful Los Angeles. Okay, C36, I couldn't remember. That's right, in Canada, it's the Red Seal. Uh, I knew that I knew the C36. Uh, and I think I've got a, a Local 78 pin over there from the instructor training program, Adrian. Jason Smith says, hello, fellas from Houston, Texas. How are you? Uh, Jan says, I've been doing pest control for several years, finally made a decision to change careers and started my tier one classes at the beginning of the year. There's a lot of people out there in a lot of trades, whether it be pest control, uh, roofing, handyman, maintenance people at apartments, complexes mm -hmm. that, and, and nothing bad, man, if, if that's, if you're in your groove and you love it, it's great. I always recommend these people, hey, have you thought about switching over and getting into HVAC, electrical, or plumbing? I, th I think those three trades, and, and, I, and I'm going to tell you why, those three trades require, yeah, those three trades require a professional license. Mm -hmm. And I think when you got that professional license, I think you make more money in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Pest control is not bad. And if you want to own your own company one day, man, pest control may be it. But it's pretty easy to open a plumbing company. HVAC, not quite as easy, but you yeah. can do it. But I, I love that Love that you're looking at moving over, John. Sorry about that. I meant to light that up. Uh, good for you. And, and I'm interested, where are you taking classes at? Do you recommend that, that people take classes like uh, going into a trade school? Or I know that uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State or something like that has an amazing technical college out mm -hmm. there. Great. Uh, 
a lot of the big mechanical contractors around hire their go up there for career day to hire people from there. Do you recommend somebody getting into the trades go to either a union or, or technical college or just come straight out and go to work for an HVAC company? Uh, me personally, I got hired on the HVAC company and kind of it was on the job training, just go from there. I never went to tech school, just mm -hmm. kind of learned as I went from there. So it, it really depends. Um, are you getting out of high school? Are you mature enough to enter a, an environment like that and learn that way? Or are you and just, learn on your own and learn on your own? Because a lot of time yeah. that's, that's what's involved. Right, right. So it, it really just depends on the person. Um, but you know, with us at Rescue Air, like you could come in, you could parchment, you could, and then just grow from there and, and take it as it, as it comes. So the, the, the thing is too, though, you got to understand this takes time. It does take time. You can't yeah. come in as a parts runner and run parts for two weeks and say, Hey man, I got it. I got all the parts delivered on time every day. I'm ready to be an installer. Right. right. They make more money. Yeah. It no, takes you, time. you ain't ready. Yeah. Especially with install. If you're coming in thinking about the, the whole money aspect in itself, that's a whole that install department. Um, that's what I run at Rescue Air. It's it takes a special kind of person to be an installer and have that mindset to from April to September, six days a week in attics every day, every single day, every day. Uh, it, it's 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 a big deal. And, and and when he says April to September, he he doesn't mean like the end of April to the first of September, <laughs> and you're only going to work forty hours a week, and you're off on yeah. the weekends. No, 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 no. Yeah, that is the busy time. Yep, that is, man, bare knuckles. Here we go every single yeah. day during that amount of time, during that time period. How many? What do you think your average day is for an installer? 10 hours, 12 hours. Uh, I mean, and I'm just kind of ballparking because I know it's different. They're probably, it's probably about 10 hours. About 10 hours average, average day. Yeah. Somewhere around. And there. you'll have some 12, 14 hour days. Yeah. You'll have some that you knock out in six hours. Yeah. Like, hey, dropped it, hung it, hooked it yeah. up, and it was ready. Yep. It, yeah. So it can it, work. It just depends. Depends on, on, the, on the job. There's so. not a lot of six hour days, though. <laughs> not very, not very many. I'm just no. gonna be honest with not you, man. Not very many, because there's always another one yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah, to yeah, come. yeah. Because if you get done in six, we got another one for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Phil says, uh, my comments to all the new plumbers coming into the trade: learn everything that you can. Med gas, backflow, water filter systems, home fire systems. Knowledge is power and money. And Phil, I gotta agree with you. Uh, I'm one of at one point it, it was like about 20 plumbers in Texas that have every master endorsement, meaning I've got my master med gas, my master WSPS water supply protection specialist, my master multipurpose residential fire protection system, uh, and had my RMP. So, I mean, I, I had my, my, all of it, everything Texas has I've done and you're right. It does lead to more money. I got it because I knew that I was opening my own company. And I wanted to be able to do anything. So when dentist offices call and say, hey, we've got a problem with, with our oxygen or with our med gases or our vacuum, I'm licensed to work on that. They're not. Most most other service companies can't do it. And, I mean, I just tell them, hey, hey look, I'm sorry, I'm the owner of the company. This is how much we charge to work on med gas. They're like, that's expensive. But, like, how many companies have you called? They said about 50. So how many can work on it? They said none. I said that's why it's expensive. And... That's why I say, look, specialize. And, and you know, you, you, you talk about it there. Learn all you can because knowledge is power and you do get paid for it. Uh, Drain Medic says your Trade Talks channel is amazing. Look, I, guys, I love it. Uh, this to me has been a lot of fun because, you know, that's what it is. It's, I mean, did you have fun set, yeah. sitting in there? It's just it's a good time. Man, it's just you just sit here and, and man, let's talk about it. And I always go through the same thing. You know, I'm going to ask you a, a question to start out. And I mean, and I don't even remember what I asked, what the first question was now. Something like you make a lot of money or in the trades or something. Don't you? Yeah. I, I, and, and I don't, I don't remember. It's always different. I remember I had Josh here one day uh, and I looked at him. I said, so you're a multimillionaire. <laughs> and he just looked at me and he kind of giggled. He said, wow, I, I, I guess I am. Yeah. He said, I've never said that. 
And I said, but, but I mean, think about it. You are in, and really you're just an electrician. And he started laughing. He said, you know, yeah, you're, you're really right. Now he got his HVAC certification too, but guys, you can get in out of high school. You went to college just cause you got paid to go. I yeah. mean, that's kind of <laughs> a lame story. Y'all need to go hear it. Why go to college just cause they're going to pay you to go. I, I, I don't know. And I, and I do cause I, I love learning. So, so I get that. But I didn't go to college and look, I, I make really good money. I, I love what I do. I've made good money at my plumbing company, uh, selling the plumbing company, selling the plumbing company again. So, I mean, look, you can make a good living in this and it just starts by walking in and applying for a job and say, Hey, I want to learn this. When you, now, now, when you first started out in the trades though, were you getting any supple, supplemental funds then? In the trades by the time you got that far or no? no no i had a plumber that that when he was an apprentice you was able to use his gi bill and he was getting supplement now i was union at the time mm -hmm. so he was going to school two nights a week but kind of like you were getting paid to go to school mm -hmm. he was getting paid to go to school and work for me yeah because they knew look he's only starting out at, at 15 bucks an hour mm -hmm. some people can't live on that yeah could you live on 15 an hour starting out right now? If I said, Hey, I want to move you over into plumbing. You're going to start out as an apprentice, 15 bucks an hour. No. Okay. Me either. No. But, but, but what I did is I got a job tending bar on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights on Saturday and Sunday during the day, I would go build fences and redwood decks. I supplemented my income. Cause I'm like, look, I can't live on this, but this is what I want to do. Yeah. And I, I will tell y'all right now, those of y'all that say, I can't afford to get this. No, you haven't found a way to make it worth right. while. Because you can. It's just like we talked about mm -hmm. in the trade talks. The the grinder will make it happen. Mm -hmm. The grinder will figure it out and, and figure out a way. There's always a way to make it happen. And, and so. uh, back to the drain medic. Look, what got me on that is I love sitting in that room. I've talked to Tommy Mello. Mm -hmm. You know Tommy? Yeah. Multi-millionaire, garage doors. Yeah. Okay. It started in high school. Have you heard his whole story? I have not. No. Man, he, he, he literally a buddy of his in high school says, says, "Hey, can you paint garage doors?" And he says, "No." He said, "Come on, man, really?" He said, I, "I work for a garage door company." He said, "We need somebody that can paint them. They pay a hundred dollars a garage door." So he did a little research, found out that he could buy the materials for twelve bucks. He says, I was painting 10, 10 garage doors a day, Saturday and Sunday in high school, making a couple of grand a week. What a great way to start. Yeah. That's crazy. And, and then he wanted to learn more. So he says, he says, I'm hiring people that I can't afford to hire. He says, literally, I'm not making any money, but I'm learning from them. Mm -hmm. How do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this? Guys, if you want to do anything in this world bad enough, you, you can do it. And, and I love people that say, I can't make enough money to No, you're wrong. You can make whatever money you want to make, but that's up to you. Yeah. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to get there? So preach. Sorry about that. Uh, LJ switch one says, do you have experience with rigging? If so, I think it would be a great idea for a video. Uh, I've had a hard time finding good rigging content for plumbers and pipe fitters. You know, I don't personally, I think squirt does. So I may be able to get with him and see, and, and Colton, we got a crooked camera here, man. Uh, but it does show that, that family feud, uh, logo pretty good. Uh, rigging is one of the courses that, that whenever I went through the instructor training program, that was the one that was hard for people to pass. And I mean, they've literally got like this frame built where there's like this hole in it. And you've got an assembly that's like eight or 10 feet long, three feet tall and all this. And you've got to rig this thing. You've got to crane it up. You've got to have hoists and come alongs and all this to where you pick it up and turn it at an angle, slide it down in this hole, unhoist it and crane it and rotate it and do all kinds of different things. And man, I'm telling you, it's pretty freaking cool, but you're right. Rigging is something I think. Even just rigging a piece of pipe to lift it up the side of the building. Cause in the union, they teach you all these different knots 
you'll need this for this, this for this, this for this. And I'm just like, man, how'd y'all learn that? Uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll talk to Squirt. If not, we'll see if we can get somebody in here. Uh, drain medics says, I agree. Eight to 10 weeks drain cleaning with support after. I mean, you gotta have support. Uh, and, and, and that is such a big deal because do your guys in the field know everything? No. Do they call you and say, hey, John, we, 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 we got a problem? With my guys, we all count on each other. Like, if I don't know everything, so they'll call me with a headbanger, and I'll be like, hey, Let me give somebody so-and-so else. a call yeah. and, and see if, you know, run it by them. You so. bet. And, and plumbing's the same way. Uh, I've got plumbers from different companies that if I run into something, I don't know, it's like, speed dial. Uh, hey, dude, I got a problem. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to send you a picture. What is this? Yeah. I, I've never seen this. So, no, I, I, I love that. We, we don't know everything. We've always got to have support. Uh, Nick, the Oreos is what's your opinion on the new flammable refrigerants? Um, so we, we got a little update on it just the other day. It's They call it flammable, but like it's like so low of... I forget what the what the word is that they use, but it's so low of a of a flame. Like you could still braise with the open flame around it and all that stuff. It's unless you actually like hold that torch to it when it's coming out when it would combust. So um I'm still learning about it. <laughs> so I know I know transporting it and stuff like that's gonna be totally different. Um, but they say it runs at the same pressures. So there's no no real change as far as your your pressure readings and stuff like that. So we'll see we'll see what happens. What about boiling points? Boiling points, all pressures, boiling points are, are, are pretty okay. much the same. So the the cool thing is is that it it the the EPA rating and all that stuff is is low enough to where they shouldn't make another change for quite a while with it coming out. So we'll see. Except in California, they'll change it. Really <laughs> yeah, <quick>. who knows? <laughs> That's what they do. DIY Tacoma, what's up? It says electric water tankless heaters question. Good luck getting an answer. Uh, what brand do you recommend? We are building a small mother in law in the back of our property, and the current build plan asks for tankless thoughts. And there's a couple, and, and I'm not going to give you the names because I've never dealt with them, but there, there's a couple. I've, uh, there's one I sell at Home Depot that I went to a house, a lady had had some jack leg plumber come in and he installed one. And when we hooked it up, I told her she needed another one after I saw the remodel they had done in her bathroom that I didn't know about and they had really messed it up. Uh, but I told her she was going to have to have another one. It kind of upset her. Uh, the biggest thing to look for are maximum flow rates. And you need to think about it because whatever GPM comes out of your shower head, say it's two GPMs because it's, it's easy math. If you're taking a, a water at about a hundred degrees, that's 75% hot water. So that two GPM head is really a gallon and a half flow. Now, if you're running a washing machine, if you're running a dishwasher, if somebody else is taking a shower at the same time, some of these little electric heaters only allow four GPMs through at the delta that we're at, meaning 70 degrees up to 100, 110 degrees. So, man, know what you're looking at and, and make sure that you're getting the maximum flow rate you can because, to me, that's the biggest deal. If they can get one up to around 8 to 10, 11 GPMs, then you're going to be okay. Think about a, an electric water heater, how fast you can run water through it. There, there's not a lot of restriction there. So... That's what you need to be looking at. Sloth LXIX says, did you work on the shields in Texas? We're building one right now in Tulsa. The shields, I don't guess I did. I'm not sure what the shields are. Cole Texan says, I'm almost on my second year apprentice uh, and was wounded. What you pay someone new to the trade to see if my job is doing me right. Okay, wait a minute. I'm almost on my second year apprenticeship and was wounded. I think was wondering. Oh, wondering. There we go. See, I knew it makes sense there. <laughs> uh, what you pay someone new to the trade to see if my job is doing me right. Well, we talked about that a while ago. 
uh, you know, right now you can probably start out around $15 an hour. It may be a little bit more if you come in and interview like a rock star. It may be a little bit less if you don't. If you've got any experience, sometimes that experience is good and sometimes that experience is going to hurt you. Sometimes I'd rather get somebody who has no experience at all and say, yeah. I love your attitude. We can train you because you get somebody with experience. They come in like, look, I already know how to do all this. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you, you know, second year apprentice, uh, 20 bucks an hour maybe, somewhere around in there. Brian Rankin says, if it's cold, it's working. If it's hot, it's working. That's what HVAC is all about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and, and the funny thing, it, it, it's really neat uh, because I heard one, one of the former chief plumbing inspectors in the city of Dallas say this, and she's so right. She says, you know, what happens when a plumber shows up to a job, an HVAC guy too, and does exactly what they're supposed to do? Nothing. I mean, if it's cold, it's working. If it's hot, it's working. Plumbing's the same way. Nothing really happens. I mean, there's nothing bad. The water doesn't shut off. It doesn't explode. It, it doesn't do anything crazy. When, when people do what's right, it's hardly ever noticed. Mm -hmm. We get in, we do our job, we fix it. It's amazing. You know, when, when I'm working on the HVAC unit that day, the next day, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. It's like, it's working. Yeah. You don't worry about it. It is what it is. Uh, Squirt says, the podcast has so many golden nuggets in it for other guys and gals to learn from. You know, and, and, and it's neat because we do. We, we have guys and gals in. Uh, you ever worked around any HVAC techs that are female? Yeah. Pretty good, aren't they? Yeah. That They know what they're doing. They're decent, yeah. Yeah. You, normally, women are really good plumbers and HVAC techs. They've got to work smarter. But they're good communicators. Man, they, they yeah, that is something that, yeah. hey, let me tell you exactly what I saw. Mm -hmm. There was a little scratch on the bottom left-hand corner. But guys can be like, what? <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, seriously, they see everything. And they communicate very, very well. And they when you say, what did you see? It's like, okay, sit down. It's going to take a minute. Because when I first walked in, there was a bug crawling right across the front doorway. <laughs> they see every little detail, and, and man, they they normally can communicate it very well. Uh, Alejandro Salgado says, "I'm not a plumber or an HVAC technician, just interested in both of these trades." That's a great thing. If you're looking for a job, it, it's it's a wonderful thing. There's over a million unfilled trades jobs in the United States right now. Have you had any guys retire this year? Or not this year, last year? Not really, no. Not really? No. Across the United States, for every 10 people that retire, only about four or five are getting back in the trade. I think it's closer to four. So for every 10 people that retire, only four are coming in each year. So that means supply and demand is fixing to get really, really skewed. That's going to help anybody in the trades because they're going to make more money. If I've got a good technician now, five years from now, he's worth a fortune to me because I don't want to lose him. So I want you all to think about that. And a lot of the people getting in the trades right now, these are going to be the entrepreneurs five and ten years from now. Mm -hmm. The average age of plumbers in Texas right now is about 57, 58 years old. Wow. Imagine what happens in seven years. The majority of the people retire. And all these people that have been, been getting in, there's not near as many of them. It, it's it's going to hurt, y'all. We have got to start recruiting more people into the trades. Joshua G says, plumbers are awesome. It's a vote for me, not for you. <laughs> uh, you, you, you know, look, and, and, and this is neat. I, I love this because even during the podcast, you, you know, there's always a, a smart comment or something. And I'm good at them. Uh, I, I love it because... I respect all the trades. I give HVAC techs a hard time. I give electricians a hard time. But you know what, guys? None of us can do what we do without all the other ones. Right. I can put plumbing in, but but if, if he doesn't make the house hot or cold, uh, ain't nobody going to stand there and use the plumbing. If the electrician doesn't give us electricity, he can't do his job. A lot of mine, I can't do them. It takes all of us. <clears throat> And as much as we think what we do is the best trade, and I think we all think that, mm -hmm. 
we really do deep down there's a respect for each other and i, I want y'all to know that because a lot of you get in the trade think well okay i hate electricians now because i'm a plumber no you don't we talk trash but at the end of the day man i love watching an electrician work that makes his wire straight and, and bends everything perfect and just ties everything in the way it's supposed to be and you look at it it's like man that, is, that just looks good mm -hmm. And I remember when I got in the union, one of the other union members got upset with me because I was sitting on a bucket when I was soldering. Had a had my Walkman, you know, on my head attached to my hard hat and headphones in. And man, I I had like four apprentices work on me, and I could get them. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. I had them taught. They knew what to do. And man, we were knocking stuff out. And he got mad at me for something, so him and I ended up going before the superintendent. And we sat in his office, and we're talking, and the guy's complaining. He says, look, you know, Rogers, he's, man, he doesn't do things the union way. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. And he says, uh, the superintendent says, well, how's this plumbing? I says, well, what, what do you mean? He says, well, how's this plumbing? It's what he does. He's a plumber. How's this plumbing? Guy kind of puts his head down. He says, man, it's, it's true square and plumb, and it don't ever leak. He says, I, I can't say anything bad about his plumbing. He says, okay, so should we run him out of the union, let him go work for the competition, yeah. or would you rather have him over here working for us? And he kind of puts his head down. He says, no, nah, I guess I'd rather have him here working working with us. I said, okay. He said, but, you know, he sits on a bucket when he's working a lot of time. Superintendent says, when you put in as much plumbing as he does a day, you can sit on a bucket too. <laughs> and man, we, we, even he started laughing. So it, it, it was kind of funny. But, you know, we, we all do things different. Uh, but we all respect each other. And, and he was a pipe fitter. So, you know, we, we all have our, our rocks we want to throw, I guess. But man, at the end of the day, we're all tradespeople and we all take so much pride in everything we do. Do you ever drive down the road and like, I worked on that house or I did that or did, did you back home? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Me, anytime I drive into Dallas, man, I, I look at buildings like, yep, I worked in that, but yep, I worked on that one too. So it is, guys. It, we, we just we take so much pride in everything we do. Moose Sewers and Drains says I took a ten year break from plumbing and came back to it with the help of my union and friends that are plumbers. I'm now making over 150 large ones. Jana trades. Fellows and ladies, join the trades, fellows and ladies. Guys, it, it, if you don't have a career that you think is a profession, you're not a professional. You're just, you know what, I got a job. You show up every day, you do your job. You know, you, you made a comment earlier in the podcast. You still love doing installs. Mm -hmm. You'd get in. Build your masterpiece and step back and look at it and, and walk out at the end of the day knowing you did something. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Fulfilled. Just <laughs> Every a pride, day. Pride and at the end of the day. And then, you know, to, to see the customer satisfaction and, and happiness, like, finally, I got, <laughs> I'm comfortable. Uh, yeah. Wait, I feel it. That, that, yeah. air, that air is cold. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know, and, and, and I love that because... That's part of my deal about being a residential plumber. I think that one of my favorite things about it is you get to work directly with the customer. And a lot of these customers have been screwed by residential service companies yeah. before. Yeah. You know, they, they get a guy come in and say, Hey man, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to sell you this amazing tankless water heater. And he got the cheapest one he could find. He didn't do things right. He didn't get it inspected. He didn't do a million things. And you have an opportunity to come in and say, look, I'm sorry that things didn't go well before, but I'm going to take care of you. Here's my agenda card. I'm going to go through all these steps and look, we're going to do things right. And you know what? There's supposed to be an inspection on that water heater. So we're going to get it inspected and we're going to make sure everything's done right. So, man, it's, it's a pretty cool career that we have. Alejandro Segato says, I'm a Luna union laborer out of Chicago, 
And, and Alejandro, what, what I would say is, and look, I, I love that. Don't get me wrong. Look at trying to get into a profession, uh, a plumber, an HVAC tech electrician. If you've already got experience in the field, I mean, if I had a union laborer come in with the right attitude, I'm like, dude, mm -hmm. you're a laborer, you've been on a shovel and, and you work your tail off every day and you got this great attitude, c come on. Uh, but look, we all need laborers too, so I, I'm not saying anything bad about it. But I think eventually you can make more money in a licensed trade, a skilled trade. Yeah. Kenneth Butler says, just got hired on as a pre-apprentice for Local 16. Good for you. Joshua G says, I've only been plumbing for about a year and already reading blueprints and training. I also respect all trades. I love that. Uh, Jacob Kensvater says, what's your least favorite plumbing code? Man, you know, it'd have to be some of the stuff like, and, and it'll sound cheesy, but here, here in Saxe, if you set a toilet, you've got to caulk it. I don't like caulking toilets. I think if I mount it right, it's okay. And besides, if it ever does leak, I want it to come up and out, not just stay under the floor. So, you know, little things like that. It's, it's nothing crazy. Guys, plumbing code is built for the to protect the health of the nation. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what it's for. Uh, so me, uh, I don't have any problem with it. Alejandro Salgado, uh, in Chicago, the plumbers and HVAC techs get paid. Well, yes, they do. Uh, squirt and I were in Chicago beginning of, uh, two weeks ago, uh, flew in for AHR, got to stay out on Navy pier at that hotel out there. Don't remember the name of it. And it was, it was really good though. Really nice. Loved it out there. Squirt, if you're in here, what was the name of the, the pizza place we ate at that was in the mall there on Navy Pier? Henry Wakefield says, at the end of the day, it takes every trade to complete the build. Man, without one trade, it's not complete. Right. So and and it, 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 there's so much truth in that, guys. Nick, the Oreo says, any special way other than superheat or subcooling to service a unit? There are, but that's the best way to do that's it. That's the best. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. That's industry standard. You bet. To to ensure that it's charged and operating right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like anything else. Is there is there any way to get from here to Dallas? There's a lot of ways. There's one way that's the right way because it's the quickest. It's you save the most gas. You get where you're going safely. There, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. Yeah, there's different ways to do it. You can put your hand on it and say, gee, how's that feel? Yeah, yeah. that's good. Beer can and, cold. And I've, seen, and I've seen them do that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's other ways, but, but yeah, uh, super heat and subcooling, you're going to notice right no matter what. Drain Medic says, I hope they never take the ability for us to rank on electricians. Yeah. You don't ever talk about, about electricians, do you? Mm, no. <laughs> None of us do. Not really. <laughs> Uh, and, and a good thing, Dustin Stiles are one of the electrician you on YouTube, good friend of mine. So we do, we, we give each other a hard time. Uh, three Bowman says, hello from San Diego. What would make the water pressure go up? Just replace the PRV and the what and the water heater. PSI goes up to 160 and then back down to 50. I'm about to replace the expansion tank. Shouldn't be your expansion tank. Uh, I'd check the PRV and see if it's adjusted properly. Yeah, see if it's a see if it's a bad PRV. Maybe call the manufacturer and tell them what's going on. George Guzman says, "I did." Or I'll call you Jorge Guzman. I did service for four years. Just made the move to new construction plumbing. Joined my local plumbers union. Guys, look, you can make great money in the union, and the union's got great benefits. I know I talk bad about the union sometimes, but I talk bad about open shop sometimes. Uh, there's good and bad about all of it. HVAC and plumbing. There's good and bad about all of it. Mm -hmm. I'm talking bad about HVAC work, about what I don't like. Being in a hot attic all day in the summer, oh, my God, I'd never do it. They say, okay, well, you're out dealing with poop and getting poop yeah. slung on you. I'd I never do it. I don't want to be in a tunnel it, it, underneath it, yeah, the house. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> so, so, man, there's good and bad about everything. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Giordano's, great pizza uh, from Chicago. And Jorge Guzman says, I'm 24, starting as an apprentice for my union. And look, guys, like I said, great education, great opportunity. It's the trades are phenomenal. And the essential tips are never stop learning. No matter what you're doing, whether you're an apprentice, whether you're a journeyman, whether you own your own company, never stop learning. 
Josh and Michael keep learning. Yeah. Uh, Josh reads books every other yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, anything you can learn, anything you can do to help you get better, keep on doing it. It's a big deal. Have you had fun? I have. It's been a long it's been day. A great time. No, it's fine. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, I think it helps a lot of people. I really think that it it helps us do what we do because we can all this is this is networking. We're talking to different people, learning different things. Uh, I think that it doesn't get any better than that. Number one, thank you for coming on here. Thank you for uh, having me, man. It, this has been fun, guys. Click up top. Subscribe to the other channel. That way you can know what's going on when the podcast drops. Uh, subscribe, ring the bell. You, you'll find out all about it. The, the live stream, we, we've we had a blast. We shot a great video. So you can learn about making money and how you make more money, how you move up in the trades. That'll be coming out on this channel. But I, I do appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks for your service. Thank you. And, and man, it's, it's been great having you at Rescue Air, getting to know you learning from you, seeing the way you do things and the way you talk about things is fantastic. Guys, if you hadn't done it yet, uh, man, if you liked what you saw, hit the thumbs up. If you like this channel and you hadn't yet, hit the subscribe button. Uh, subscribe to the, to the channel. Ring the bell. That way you know what's going on. And I'm going to think. I think I, I'm actually here next week. Uh, I'll leave tomorrow to go to Miami. I'll be there with Central Therm this week. So a lot of cool stuff coming up with them. But speaking of there, it wasn't in the white tuxedo there. I will be back next week and see y'all then. If you met somebody in here, you saw something people like, you know, connect with them on either LinkedIn or here on YouTube, follow their channel. Uh, thanks to Squirt, Colton, Architectural Sheet Metal in the house. Uh, so many people. Uh, thanks to John Wren. And if you're looking for a job in plumbing or HVAC, reach out to Rescue Air. They're always looking for people. Guys, have a great day. I appreciate it. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.